If you've got a really thin needle with a small eye and then you've got a chunky uh, thread and then you actually get it through the eye of the needle, then you try to stitch, you're going to have trouble pulling it through because it hasn't eased the path. But the one we really like is the chenille 14 which we take to our classes for people to use and once they've used it they find the stitching goes through so much more easily they can't think why they didn't use them before. However if you are using a thread then it really won't go through. Don't forget there's always a stiletto. A stiletto is a sharp pointed tool and that can be put into the fabric to prise the threads apart to ease that path through for the really really difficult threads. Now the threads we use, you can use all sorts of uh, threads these days. I use knitting wools and really quite thick ones too, really chunky and obviously ones with a little bit of sparkle as well as your conventional ones that we normally associate with embroidery and ones with a shiny and a very fine wool and the little bit of sparkle and there's so weaving yarns anything that takes your fancy but we're hoping to build up lots of textures and show you how exciting that can be and look how beautiful that shaded knitting wool is and yet this fantastically coloured silk well, couching is a line stitch and it's one of the most versatile stitches that you can use. There are so many varieties which I'm hoping to show you. So I've marked out a little place here where I'm going to do, starting with my away knot, right away from the actual piece, and you bring it up. So you always take the ends through if you can, and then you can just sit it down where you want it to go. And with a finer thread, again, I'm starting with probably a little way, not, it's such a tiny knot, I should probably mark it there with a little double stitch just to make sure it doesn't come away through. And then once I do that, I'm just going to bring it up and try and just do a little straight stitch to hold it in place. So you can see there are 101 ways that you can use couching. One of the simplest stitches which I used to dislike very much and I now love. Now, many of you will have seen an ordinary chain. You put the thread to one side, you go back into the top, you take a little stitch through and pull it through and that makes a chain. Twisted chain is really very simple and just a slight variation. You take the thread to one side, you go back in, but instead of going at the top, you go to the side and you bring that needle through diagonally, pulling it to form a lovely little twisted knot. So there really is no limit to what you can do with a stitch when you decide to take it and run with it and it can be um, absolutely chunky, it could be fine and delicate, it can create landscapes, seascapes, skyscapes, it can also produce pattern and pattern is where we go next. Now Jan and I, we have, our families, we're very lucky we all get on well together. So we went to Kew Gardens with them on one lovely spring day when all the azaleas were out. There wasn't time to do a drawing but I took a photograph and when I got home I loved the proportions of the greens and all I did was simply um, took my photograph and I looked at the balance of colours and translated it into a grid so that you've got the pink of the azalea flower and you've got the green of the uh, foliage. And then I decided to do the whole thing in detached chain. So the lovely thing about that is that instead of thinking what stitch am I going to do, you know the stitch and all you're going to do now is to see how you can make that stitch work for you. Use a contrast of shiny and matte threads. Now look at this wonderful texture. This is a stitch called Sorbello stitch and a lot of people still haven't heard of it. I don't know why because I've been teaching it all over the place because I think it's such a, a lovely, lovely stitch. So you have to think of a square in your mind when you're working this, four sides of a square. So I'm going to take from A to B, I'm, taking, I'm working with a big thread here so you can see it clearly, A to B a straight stitch. So that's my one side. So if in my mind I've got a square and it might be helpful for you to draw it. So here I'm just going to draw several squares that, um, so I know where I'm going. 
So I've made my first side, I'm coming out onto the third corner. And this is where most people go wrong with it. You're going anti-clockwise, round and down under the bar, not through the material, and that's the first stitch. This was a very strange tree. It was a type of palm tree, I think, in San Diego, where they had these very strange growths on them. And the only way I could get that effect was to use sorbello stitch. And although people say, oh, you're using sorbello stitch, it is so versatile. This section really is about uh, dots and dashes. So we've dealt with the dashes and now for the dots. Uh, this um, I looked at before when we were looking at the lazy daisy or detached chain. But up here there was a plethora of foliage and I've used these distorted knots in order to give that feeling of an abundance of foliage. So protruding foliage, you could have the loops high and low and so on. There I've done the French knots and as I've done them, onto the needle I've put beads and sequins so that they sort of drift off the surface. It was just to give it that life and energy and I really have quite enjoyed doing it. And this is an older piece of mine but it also shows how crunchy this knotted buttonhole could be. And this was an, an interpretation of some lichen that had some hoar frost on it so it had little collars of ice, really gorgeous. And so again, I, I did a background of applique with silvery pieces. And then I used ribbons and wools to get the height. And then I've carried on doing knotted buttonholes. And I used some plastic in the end to get that sort of quality. But it looks as sort of a bit rough, but that's how I did it. It was knotted buttonhole on top of a knotted, knotted buttonhole. And then I've got little beads sticking onto that to, to make it really glisten. So there are so many possibilities. And of course, you don't have to copy uh, a natural object totally. They're just giving you ideas and then you can exaggerate what you want to do and you can understate other things and the world's your oyster. <laughs>